All right, we're gonna do five punctuation questions in five minutes or less. Let's get started. First of all, we're always gonna look at our question and we're gonna see the same question that we see on grammar, which choice completes the text so that it conforms to the conventions of standard English. Anytime I see that phrase, I need to take a look at the answer choices. And if I see that the punctuation is the thing that's changing, I'm dealing with a punctuation question. And so I gotta read the sentence where that blank is. So here I have metamorphosis is a process of blank. Something changes from one form to another. Period. That's all I need to read. So let's take a look at those options. We have transformation comma when, transformation comma it is when, transformation m dash it is when, transformation period it is when, starting a whole new sentence. In this case, I do not need to start a whole new sentence or make an independent clause out of the second half of this sentence. I can start a dependent clause with when, and I can link that to another clause with a comma, and it's perfectly fine. So I don't need to add it is, and I don't need to start a new sentence. I'm just gonna choose A, the simplest answer here is the best. Question number two, we see the same style of question. We take a look and we see punctuation changing, and we go over here to read what we need to read. It says here that cell towers are usually tall structures, blank, that contain antennas and electronic communications equipment. Now, right away, something I notice is that if I leave this blank, this sentence still works. So I'm just looking for some extra information. And if I take a look at my answer choices, I can see that we're adding extra information up to 200 feet. I know that I can add extra information between commas, m dashes, or parentheses, but the way that works is slightly different with each one. If I use commas, it really should be a complete clause and I shouldn't use any sort of shorthand. And in this case, the proper sentence would be up to 200 feet tall. And since I'm lacking that word tall, this is kind of an incomplete fragment. And so what I'm gonna do is just put it in between parentheses because you can do that with parentheses. You don't really, there's no rules inside of parentheses for the most part. So we're gonna go with B and move on. If you see a question like this and answer choices like this, you probably don't even need to look at the paragraph because all we're looking for here is the correct way to punctuate dialogue. Anytime we do dialogue, if we introduce the speaker well, by saying she, then we have to use a comma after that verb say. And then we're going to use quotes to open the quote and again to close the quote. And so right now the only option here that does that correctly is D. Okay, now this one's a little bit trickier. Again, we see here that we have a bunch of different punctuation options between the word quickly and those. Taking a look at our paragraph, we see panic spread blank. Still alive barricaded themselves into homes, terrified of the oncoming horde. Talking about a zombie apocalypse here, I think this is from World War Z. Now, I really have a couple of options here. On one hand, I could go ahead and just make a new sentence and say quickly, period, those, and continue. However, starting off with that pronoun is a little bit clunky, and also the rest of this sentence is referring to that panic, that fear, right? People barricading themselves into homes and also being terrified of the oncoming horde. So there's two things that are attached to that idea of panic, and so, it makes sense to keep this sentence all together with a form of punctuation that can conjoin two independent clauses. That's our semicolon, even though I personally hate them, it actually works here. Remember, we don't wanna use commas to connect two independent clauses. That's what we call a comma splice. But if we have two independent clauses that we wanna connect because they're related basically on the theme or the subject, then we can use a semicolon. And so that's why we're gonna mark D. Okay, once again, I look at my question and I see that I'm dealing with punctuation changes. I'm gonna take a look at the very start of this paragraph and there's a blank right at the beginning. And we see that the options all start with the word commerce. And so what we're doing here is defining the word commerce to start this paragraph. And there's one punctuation that's particularly good at defining things. That's the colon and that is option C, right? Commerce, colon the exchange of goods and services between buyers and sellers. Simple as that. Colons are really useful when you just have like one word or a short phrase on either side of the colon. Like it really is good for those kinds of situations where you want to define something or get a little more specific. There are many more kinds of punctuation that I have not covered in this particular video, but if you have questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and make sure you check out the resources in my slides. There are two really great websites for you to go to if you have questions about punctuation. The Punctuation Guide, I love this site. This is one of my favorites. It's got examples. You just click on the kind of punctuation you want. You click this here and you get this. It's awesome. And also the Purdue OWL, the Online Writing Language Lab, whatever it's called, it, the, the OWL is great, okay? 
Uh, you can go on there and see good examples of writing. You can see the rules. You can learn even about like APA citation formats and stuff. It's everything you need to get ready for college writing and really it'll help you a lot for punctuation on the SAT. Next up we got sentence function. See you next time.